All right. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another, another edition of the one and only W Series Breakdown presents. We will have a little bit of a longer show today, but don't worry for you all watching on YouTube or well, basically on YouTube or anytime later on that exact platform. We will have both of these separated, so it's not too, too long for you all. But this could be around a two-hour episode for both. So get ready because we still need to break down the French Grand Prix. We still need to break down the W Series race from the French Grand Prix. And we still need to get you all ready for the one and only, um, well, Hungarian, a.k.a. Magyar Nagyadic, which would basically translate to the Hungarian Grand Prix. So that's going to be very fun for everybody to watch from F1 side to the W Series side, and that's going to be the biggest thing is for that, <clears throat> for the W Series. And, yeah, we're going to have some fun breakdowns here, especially for the French Grand Prix. We'll, we'll react to what every driver, for what a lot of drivers basically had to say in their exact words, and it was big. Big for a lot of other drivers like Nene and Marty, but we'll break down all of that here starting up very, very shortly. So, let's get into it now. It's going to be very interesting, very fun, and we start off kind of with telling you all where everybody qualified, because this is very important, especially if you did not watch the race or just learn about it from here on out. It was broadcasted on the ESPNU network, aka ESPN University network, and that's kind of, that's a pre premium cable channel, kind of. It's really weird, but ESPN uh, broadcasts it, and it's very fun. So we go to the latest and the uh, results, basically. Won't tell you where anybody really finished until a little bit later on. This is the biggest thing. The top three in the championship still are Jamie Chadwick, Abby Poole, and Beitzkevisser in that order. But we will go with the French Grand Prix round four. And we're going to view all the sessions. This is very important because we're going to look at the qualifying. Qualifying, well, Jamie Chadwick wasn't able to take pole. We kind of discussed that before the start of the Grand Prix was, well, because she crossed the pit line, and that's a big no-no in F1. And it, it kind of still is a big no-no in even auto racing, which would be like NASCAR and things like that. You don't want to cross that a pit line. Or if you do, basically, well, if you're impeding somebody who might be coming out of pit lane, that's what it was. And it's just during a very fast-paced qualifying session, 30 minutes only for these drivers to have to try to get their fastest laps in. And it's continuation. They only have two sets of tires. The one that they have, the one that they put on their cars the first time, the brought to the track, basically two sets, like I said. And they go out there and they burn those completely to the ground in practice. Then for about 10, 15 minutes, they'll run those for qualifying and then the last couple of minutes or the last part of the qualifying, they'll put on the new set of tires and they'll get ready. They'll warm those tires up and then they'll have enough traction and enough grip to be able to race with those uh, tires. So that's a big thing. Qualifying, though, I could wanted to say, let's see if it's still the same thing. Jamie fourth and in practice. So I believe this is correct. They kind of had it strange, but either way, Jamie Chadwick was going to be, she technically got pulled. It wasn't until afterwards that she got knocked off and pulled till about third place. So that moved up by Skavister to pull Nerea Marti to start on the front row with Mark De Garcia in, um, fourth place and they just slotted uh, Jamie Chadwick into third with a two place grid penalty 
So, yeah, Marta Garcia fourth. And all the times were very close. Like, you talk about that top four to top five. It was only 202, 235. Jamie Chadwick's fastest time, but 202, 246, 202, 339, 202, 359, 202, 572. A couple of drivers had some some issues with track limits, but not too bad. And that was pre- pretty interesting in itself. Now doing, you know, extra research for myself, hearing what the drivers had to say. Even after qualifying, they were saying, well, it's pretty good. Abby Eaton, her best qualifying. She said, yes, I finally have some luck, I feel, in this series. Um, it was the best qualifying I've, I've had almost ever in this series as well. So she was feeling very confident moving on into that race. You know, drivers that were... P- Doing a pretty decent job. Junior Noto, 14th. 13th was Bruno Tomaselli. Abby pulling. And Alice Powell struggled for sure through that qualifying because 11th and 12th, especially when Abby pulling is second place. Remember, in this championship, she was only second place. 43 or 46 points coming into this race, to be exact, too. So she needed a good start and she needed a good finish to really, really help her out in the end. And almost had that, too. But again, we now get into the race highlights of top 10, starting from 10th on to the top step. Again, this is still qualifying. Emma Kimmel Line, it's Sarah Moore, Jessica Hawkins, Fabian Volven, Abby Eaton, Belen Garcia, Marta Garcia, Nerea Marti, Baitska Visser, and Jamie Chadwick. So, how did it all play out at Le, at Le Castle of France? Well, here we go. So, talk about this was a major, major start. And right off the bat, right as the five lights go out, Abby Eaton's able to get a fantastic start. But third, check that, fourth place. I believe that was Martha Garcia. Had no reason to go to the left. And this is even what Abby Eaton said after the race, too, in their diary room. And had really no reason to go to the left. And I agree. She had space on the right to stay there and try to get a good launch and try to get a good draft from the 33 of Nerea Marti because Baiskevisser started on pull. So instead, goes to the left, squeezes out Eaton. Eaton can't go anymore to the left, so they're going to collide, and she hits her left front tire because there was space there was a gap there the gap closed ever so quickly and Abby Eaton found herself up in the air for not the first time in her W Series career thankfully when she landed it was not a bad impact for her in general broken left front suspension And everybody had to avoid her, and that's how it started. Safety car, of course, the the medical car behind there, so was able to stop at Abby, where Abby Eaton was, and everybody else was able to control for a second there. And off that start, Jamie Chadwick, the one who started in third due to her penalty, her grid spot penalty at the start of the race, moves up into second place as a safety car happens so safety car was deployed right at the start of this race if i'm not mistaken and jamie chadwick actually was able to pass for the race lead before the safety car hit the safety car was actually a little bit later than expected but then they finally uh went on to full course yellow or even virt no it was full course yellow so yeah both left Rear and front suspension was broken. And then we move on 20 minutes into the race. And this is where things were getting tougher. Again, 10 minutes gone. Not a lot of racing on the racetrack. And Chloe Chambers, right off the start, before all of her incidents happened, she had actually, real quick, moved up She had actually moved up into, I'm trying to find where 
They did not show it on the first lap. They did not show the leaderboard on the first lap, but she said it herself. She was moving up spots. She had started around 14th, 13th position. She was trying to get, she was going to get a top 10 because she had a lot of pace with her race car. And right off of that, they cut back to Juju Noda behind their racing. And then one driver comes way far from behind and just completely cleans out chambers. You'll see on the replay where she had no room and no no reason to make that late lunch. Yes, it could have been avoided by Chambers, but at the same time, come on. You're coming from miles away is what it feels like. And... So yeah, at this point, Chloe Chambers is in 15th. Emma Kimmelina is in 14th. And off of that restart, that restart was a crucial one. Chloe Chambers is able to jump Kimmelina and be around where Bustamante is, if I'm not mistaken. And actually passing Noda off the start. So she, at that point, was around 12th place. And the Hughes from 16th was also able to make you know up some spots but also tried a completely crazy dive bomb and just completely wipes her out you can see off of another a replay she's coming from miles away Chloe Chambers is already kind of arcing her her uh, her race car to make this corner, to make this apex. You know, you go wide and then you cut in because that's the best line possible to try to get a straight straighter line into the corner. And the Hughes from a long ways back cuts to the inside, hits her brake as late as possible, trying to make that apex and also trying there and makes contact with Chloe Chambers' right rear tire. Makes contact with it, breaks her suspension, breaks Chloe Chambers' suspension, and a Hughes will drive away um, with you know no scratches basically on her race car besides a little bit of tire wear from that exact move. So takes out the American, takes out um, yeah Chloe Chambers' chance to score points for Jenna Racing, and just a bad move. In itself, she ended up, DeHuis ended up getting a 10 second time penalty or check that stop and go penalty, if I'm not mistaken. So it was, it was a right call for the FIA to do exactly that because it, there was no need for that move ever to have occurred. So then right off the restart, before that, Bites us her on the first restart. Did not have the best start. She was really far behind. Her best restart. She was really far behind off that restart. And Jamie Shadow kind of played it, her cards perfectly. Where she just took off right at the end of the safety car. Instead of slowing it down and breaking everybody up. No, she just took off and went. Just like it was um, in NASCAR, for example. When the pace car dives down to the pit lane. Before they had this uh, restart zone. A lot of drivers would just go right then. And it would throw everyone off. Or they'd try to wait, wait, wait until they got to the line and get, then go. Again, my point was exactly that. <laughs> and so this time, Bikes Visser was ready for it. And stayed right on Jamie Chadwick's bumper. And right off of turn one. Because turn one goes left to right, if I'm not mistaken. And dives down to the inside and was able to make it stick, but just now compromised herself for the next corner, where Jamie was able to just ride on the outside, which would turn into the inside for the next left-handed corner, and got her right off the pass. But that let an opportunity for Bell and Garcia to come inside and to try to make it a three-way battle, but she was just a little too far, trying to pass for second place, wasn't able to, and... Belen Garcia stayed in third position with Nedia Marti in fourth. Volvin had actually picked up the fifth with Powell in sixth. And there we go, Emily DeHughes would get that 10-second time penalty with 12 minutes to go. That's 
they didn't have a lot of laps because of the nature of how this race went, how this race was able to kind of heat up in a, in a sense. So a good try from both teammates were battling it out. And at that point, Abby Pulling was in eighth place. So this was a battle for sixth position at that time, which would allow Sarah Moore as well as Abby Pulling couldn't get past either of these drivers to get close to be able to have an opportunity to pull out a sixth position, which Sarah Moore also talked about this. I've been having so I just it's been very difficult. The season has been difficult for me. I've been trying to get as many points as possible, but in a sense, not being able to get top fives and things like that. This is not exactly what she say, said, but a couple of those things. It's just very, very interesting hearing what the drivers had to say after these races. But that battle allowed Sarah Moore to pass pulling, allowed Sarah Moore to have an opportunity like with Martha Garcia and with Fabian Volvin as they did go side by side into a couple of corners. And I mean, Sarah Moore just trying her best to try and par pass them with Scuderia. So a very good chance for for her to get to get by. So just a really good race. Overall, for Sarah Moore, she came in afterwards saying that's the most fun I've ever had at this race, just because of the battles, things like that. Not not finishing wise, but just the battles and being able to feel really good. So Jamie Chadwick does end up getting the win, and it was a big time podium for a Quant Fury Racing W Series Racing team, to be exact. Uh, Jamie Chadwick wins, Belen Garcia getting second, and Nedia Marti getting third. Both Nedia Marti and Belen Garcia from Spain, so it's an all-Spaniard top two. As Jamie Chadwick just able to get past Bytska Visser, and even Nedia Marti getting that third place, and pushing Bytska Visser down to fourth position when Visser, technically, you know, she started on pole. She started on that front row and wasn't able to stay there for the rest of the race. So, just a very, very crazy race. All around two safety cars, only bringing in about 15 minutes of real racing on the racetrack, meaning no safety car with that. Um, that's the first time that they've had two safety cars this season since the... Since um, uh, Miami, I believe. If I'm thinking they had two safety cars, they, it's just because they had safety cars in both those races. But the point is, that's been the first time that we've seen kind of a caution-heavy race since since that weekend. But a very, very good race in general. Very fun to watch. Uh, had so much fun watching all of it. And now... Wanted to read what the drivers had to say. All of them had to say, basically. And a lot of them, even that weren't on the podium, tweeted about their uh, races. And, I mean, yeah, we kind of already debriefed a couple of the drivers that were out. Um, even Abby Eaton, really, off that start, she said, Here I go again. <laughs> I'm in the air. Um, and, yeah, like I said, thankfully, she... She brought she brought herself back in one piece and was not injured or severely injured after that wreck because it's so true. There's it the suspension is so stiff. You don't ha need to have a jelly suspension for these race cars, and so with that, all the inertia, all that energy that has been built up goes boom onto the ground. That's gonna go straight to your body. You're going to feel that. Now I've never been in an open seater, an open wheel race car where something like that has ever happened. I've never really raced professionally or even at the club level, but it it's so true. 
It's such a small car, you don't know how it's going to feel. And we saw last year at Circuit of the Americas, two drivers, not just one, not just Abby Eden, but also an F4 U.S. driver break their back, break their back because of a sausage curb or break their back because, well, yeah, they hit it in the middle. But it's all that energy and all how stiff that car is. Again, just th- thankful that Abby Eaton is in one piece and will be racing this weekend instead of having to get a sub driver and for her to be out for the rest of the year. So it's a big W in my eyes for the safety of at least the race cars in that sense and that Martha Garcia's move did not cost Eaton, you know, another broken bone or anything like that. But, you know, moving on, wanted to see what the top three at least had said. I know we'll actually bring bring up this, what Belen Garcia said. Belen Garcia, if I'm not mistaken, that was, yeah, Belen Garcia said, th- this was off of her Instagram, said yes. Finally, my first podium at W Series racing, and it feels great. I want to thank everyone that helped me get here. It might just be a race result, but it means a lot to me right now. Also want to congratulate Jamie Chadwick on her victory and Nerea Marti joining me in this podium. Great points for Quant Fury Racing Team. Fantastic way to put it. And there's really cool artwork um, from... W Series France, somebody, uh, her name is Evie Gaffney, so E-V-I-E-G-A-F-F-N-E-Y, who made this post really cool special artwork of Fanon Garcia and Maria Marti hugging each other as they're both on the podium together with this at, on the same racing team, and again, from the same country, so it's very special I'm sure to be on the same podium as your same colleague. And they've been friends since day one of W series. I'm sure that they've even been friends before then too. So very special to see that just really cool uh, artwork in general. So yeah, now we go back to what they had to say there from a castle. The latest news um, Mega Moves take Chadwick to 7th victory. This is by the W Series. What they had to say off of this whole thing. Reigning double champion Jamie Chadwick pulled off two stunning overtakes at circuit Paul Ricard to secure seventh straight W Series win and extend her lead at the top of the championship standings. I know a couple of things that she did say, even in the diary room, she said it wasn't the easiest race to win, but after she was able to get by by um on that second time, she was able to end up getting that victory. But what did she have to say? Starting from third on the grid, having received two pl- a two-place grid penalty after qualifying on Friday, the Britain twice pay- passed pole sitter, Bites Kvisser. The Britain twice passed pole sitter, Bites Kvisser, during the dramatic a dramatic race in southeastern France, which featured two safety car periods and numerous wheel-to-wheel bottle- battles. Uh, Jamie's fifth victory in five from five races so far this year and the 11th of her W Series career gives her a 70-point lead over the nearest challenger, Abby Pulling. Going into the second half of the w, of the 2022 W Series season, which begins in Hungary next weekend. Okay. Yeah, my neck is hurting a bit but uh, Jamie finished the race in support of the Formula 1 Grand Prix de France 2022 ahead of the Spanish teammate Belen Garcia and 
Nere Amarti. Bellin's best W Series result and maiden podium finish moves her up into fourth in the championship. That is one spot ahead of Nedia, who matched her best W Series result of third and one behind Vitska Visser ahead of Nedia, who matched her best W Series. Okay, one behind Vitska, who moved. Two points behind Abby in the standings thanks to a fourth place finish here. Yes, that definitely helped Bytskovicer move two spots behind Abby Pooling. And it also helped that Abby Pooling did not have the strongest finish she could have possibly gotten in La Castle de Spain at, or in La Castle de France at none other than Paul Ricard. So it, it definitely always, always goes both ways. You can have the best possible finish, which is a first place. But if your opponent finishes second, well, your opponent finished second and you don't get the biggest gain if they were to finish either outside the points or with the least points possible, which would be about one to two. Um, but Alice Powell made up more places in the Castellet than any driver going from 11th on the grid to 5th. Teammates Marta Garcia and Fabian Volvind produced some scintillating racing before finishing 6th and 7th respectively. British trio Sarah Moore, Abby, and Jessica Hawkins completed the top 10. The track temperature Friday was 54 degrees Celsius. Wow, that is hot. 54 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees higher than it was during Friday's qualifying session. As the drivers lined up for the start of Saturday's race, Nadea was slow away from second on the grid, which put Jamie straight on the tail of Weitzkevisser, who started from pole position for the first time in her W Series career. The 2019 runner-up held the lead for less than three corners as Jamie braked later than on the entry to turn three and completed a breathtaking move around the outside. There was still some grip on the outside for Jamie as we talked about it before. She was able to make that move stick. Phenomenal move to take that lead away from Bikes who that ended up sealing the deal, basically. So, a uh, big job there. The safety car was deployed before the end of the first lap as the car of Abby Eaton was stricken on the side of the start-finish straight after contact with Martha Garcia. At the start, Abby was propelled into the air after being squeezed between Marta and Belen, and the stewards deemed that there would be no further investigation. Yes, at the start, it was it was a racing incident. I do agree on the FIA not giving a penalty here to Marta Garcia, even though, yes, there was no need. There was no necessary need for that move to really happen as Marta Garcia, I guess, felt like she needed to go to the left to try and block off a run, but... I guess there was really no need if she stays on that outside. Does that hinder her chance of keeping the fourth or third place that she was in? Who's to really say with Abby Eaton going to that left side, if that gap does hold, do they go three abreast? Probably. And what's going to happen in the breaking zone? Who's going to back out? Or are they all three going to stay there? And does Bell and Garcia end up making contact with all three? And then, well, since she makes that contact with all three of them, does it hit hit them off the road and does it basically DNF all three of those racers? So there are a lot of what-ifs from that incident. Is it only one car that's going to get hurt or is it going to be all three of them or two racers getting the worst of it and one of them surviving? So there are a lot of things. If... Martha Garcia does not hinder her car straight to the left for no reason to close up a gap to try and maybe, I mean, to be fair, it, in those 
open wheel cars. You can give the benefit of the doubt here too. In the end, Marta Garcia and just in any driver in that situation, you don't have a rear view mirror like you do in a regular closed cockpit car. You have two side mirrors, and that's all you're guessing off of. And right off the start, normally somebody doesn't have the biggest start of their freaking career, the best start of their career ever. And so with that being said, with her going to that inside, cutting, kind of cutting it off, it's, it's difficult to... Like, you're not going to instantly look, oh, is there somebody to my left in my blind spot? No, you're going to assume that there is none, nobody. You're going to go there, especially given the fact that they don't have spotters. The only thing is IndyCar has spotters, NASCAR has spotters, and I believe that that's really the only two that have spotters, if I'm not mistaken. So, ju just basically, in general, all that coming together... You can give the benefit of the doubt in that situation. I do agree. No further action was necessary. It's one of those racing deals right off the start. So just let them go. And that's what the FIA did. And it worked out. There were some. Uh, the cars twice went through the pit lane behind the safety car while... Abby's car was removed. The race resumed after a six-minute delay, and Jamie stole a march on the field at the restart. But no sooner had the drivers got back up to full speed when the safety car was out again. The contact between Chloe Chambers and Emily De Hughes at turn three resulted in the former's retirement from the race and a 10-second stop-go penalty for the latter. Meaning, like we talked about, Emelita, who gets a 10-second time penalty. I've watched that replay multiple, multiple times. It still does not make any sense for DeHuis to dive bomb like that, where she had no way, shape, or form she was ever going to make that corner. It was Chloe Chambers fully, because Chloe Chambers had literally three to four car lengths of space before DeHuis dive bombed that corner. It stinks. But that is an experience at its finest, in my opinion, where drivers at a young age will make that type of move because they are overly excited, over-aggressive, and of course, it takes experience to be in that situation. And that's, you know, she's probably never going to make that move again because that was a hefty penalty, a 10-second stop-go penalty in a sprint race where you don't go to down pit lane to try and get tires. It would have been different if, yeah, sure, 10 second stop, go penalty, and then you change your tires and you go out. Yeah, uh, it's different if if it was a longer race or anything like that. But no, this is a stop, go penalty in a sprint race that ruins your chances of scoring a single point because now you could potentially get a go a lap down. Um... Then when they restarted, there were 13 minutes of the 30 minutes plus one lap race race remaining. When the action restarted, Bicycle held onto the back of Jamie this time, and that allowed her to regain the lead on the inside at turn one. But Jamie came again, sweeping back into first place with another bold move around the outside at turn two. That put Bytskevisser in the into the clutches of Bellin, who overtook her for second a few corners later. As the race entered the final 10 minutes, Jamie set the fastest lap of the race to give her a one and a half second buffer over Bellin and Bellin. And behind the top two, Bytska ran wide at turn 11 to hand third place to Nidia and Marty or Nidia. Marta and Fabian proved most of the drama in the closing, provided most of the drama in the closing stages. They c contested a prolonged wheel to wheel battle, which was finally resolved with 10 seconds left on the clock when Marta passed her teammate for sixth place at turn six. 
That put Fabian under pressure from Sarah and Abby, but she held on to seventh place on the last lap. Jamie finished two and a half, 2.4 seconds actually ahead of Bellin, sparking jubilant celebrations between her and Sarah Morgan, who became W Series first ever woman race winning engineer. Jamie and, well, Megan. A very, very special race for Jenner Racing and Jamie Chadwick for that exact moment. Here, what or Let's see what Jamie had to say. I enjoyed that one, and it makes up for yesterday. Getting pole position and having that taken away. I felt like I needed to make amends today. I'm really happy Beitzka Visser kept me honest initially, and I moved back after the safety car, so I'm happy that I got my head down after that, and it feels great to get another win. Belen Garcia, what did she have to say to the media this time after her second place? It's not been easy the last few weeks. I haven't been feeling very well, so this feels like glory. I'm so happy. I really enjoyed the race. I got a great start and could fight hard, so everything went well. Um, what an area mark do you have to say? I'm happy, but obviously I wanted more. I made a mistake at the start and after in the safety car periods, I didn't fix everything, but I'm happy to score. I'm happy to score good points for the championship and will go again in the next race. And Dave Ryan, the racing director of W Series said it finished up a good race. I had all it had all the ingredients. Uh, it was a shame about the incident with Abby Eden at the start, which kind of disrupted things. And I'm not sure what happened to Bitescaviser as as she had lots of opportunities, but ended up in fourth place. There was a lot of aggressive driving out there, and I know lots of the drivers were are unhappy, but. It just looked like hard racing, and I didn't see any problem with it. I agree with the race director, Dave Ryan, there. There's no reason to give a penalty in that situation. We discussed it multiple times, again and again and again. But what what else is there to do? What happens if Martha doesn't make that left hand aggressive? turn aggressively to block that middle do we go three abreast into turn one do do all three of them make it out alive do a couple of them cut the corner and all of a sudden this is a different result than we actually have and abby eden could have been the one that still makes you know they make contact and she's in the sandwich and she goes up in the air to the side just like we saw in the inaugural season where I believe it was Alice Powell who was up in the air there to go into the uh, barrier at um, Norris Ring. A lot of, you know, a lot of things with it. But congratulations to Jamie Chadwick is what he said. She just kept her nose clean and did what she had to do. It was also a great job by Belen Garcia. I was very pleased to see her up there and Nidia Marti held on for a strong third place as well. A lot of teammates were battling out there, which was interesting overall. It's been a good event. There's a bit of damage for us to fix ahead of Hungary next weekend, but I didn't think I don't think it's anything too desperate. Yeah. There are there is definitely damage, but a lot of it is suspension damage, and I'm sure that they'll be able to fix that very quickly. And have no issue to get the cars 100% for um, for Hungar Ring before they have a long break where they can also go back to the factory and fix more damage if they have to. Now on to a couple of drivers who didn't even finish 
on the uh, podium. I want to have their take from what they said, get their take to be exact, from what they said on the uh, race recap. Should be exciting. Uh, one, one of them being, we'll get Juju Noda's reaction here very shortly. And Juju Noda's one of the drivers who did say what she, what happened. <laughs> this is pretty much an interesting story, which is a shame, but it happens when you're up in um, international travel. Uh, she says, my account is now recovered since my phone was stolen. It was much better. It was a much better weekend in Paul Ricard race, especially in qualifying. I hope to have better race. Hope to have better ra a better race in next weekend. You will find more detail in my official Facebook. Okay, so that's basically what she said in in her Twitter post. Yeah, it was a very solid weekend for Juju Noda. Congratulations to her on a solid weekend in general. Then moving on to a couple of other drivers too that kind of gave their take. Um, like we said, Chloe Chambers. Giving her take. <laughs> well, it was shaping up to be a great race. I made up four positions in the first few corners, but was hit from behind after yes after the safety car restart. That's racing. Still learned a lot and made huge improvements on pace. On to Hungary in a week. Looking forward to seeing what she has to build. For her next weekend, which is going to be fantastic this week in Hungary. Uh, coming up very, very quickly. Less than 14 hours or less than 15 hours away, basically. We'll give you the official timestamp when we talk more about Hungary, which is coming up very shortly for us to do exactly that. Like I said, this is probably going to be an hour-long breakdown for the French Grand Prix and... Would be very exciting. And that's the thing. Chloe Chambers before some noticing this on her uh, her her um, her post or on her Twitter basically, she was going to FR Americas. She wasn't just gonna race in F four USA, she was also going to race in FR Americas. Especially this year when she'd get the opportunity to. But it turns out going straight to W Series, which I think was a mega move. As FR America still has a lot of room to grow and gain traction in the United States of America. That's where you also had the likes of the Kiwi, the fantastic Kiwi. Um, dang, I'm forgetting his name. But that team, Kiwi Motorsports in the United States, really gaining their traction, helping out their drivers from the F4 US uh, groups. But yeah, that was a big move. Um, see what Abby Pulling had to say after her race as well. really didn't break down anything that she had to say but she did say um smiling because it's another race week last weekend was not the result i we wanted i had breaking issues throughout the whole weekend hopefully we'll get them fixed and be on the charge again and hungry it's a new racetrack for me so has anyone got any tips that's what she said off of twitter so interesting to kind of break everything 
uh, down from there. And, I mean, we're getting closer and closer to really talking about the next race weekend. So stay tuned, tuned on that as we will break down very shortly. We will break down none other than the W Series race for Hungary. They have raced there before, so we'll also break down what happened last year and who to expect to do well. Uh, one more driver really to read what they had to say. From last week, we'll see if we can get it. Was well, Bites Kvisser. A difficult race. Couldn't really get the car to do what I wanted. Gave it all, but P4 was the maximum possible. Still third in the championship, and next race is next week in Budapest. So we'll try again. That's all really from this race weekend. We will hit out, head out to Budapest. We will head out to talking more and more about this race weekend new more news as well about the w series will break all of that down for you all and get you all set so for now thank you all very much for watching and listening to the breakdown of france remember everybody stay tuned we will break down this race weekend for Hungary very, very shortly as we take a quick break. For, for now, thank you all for watching or listening to the first part on YouTube. We'll catch you all next time. Peace.